Hello, dear students. Здравствуйте, студенты. Today you are going to learn Russian language with me. And at this Russian lesson, I will teach you how to pronounce all the Russian names of months and seasons. And also I will teach you two important and very useful Russian grammatical constructions if you want to say, for example, in December or in winter. They are absolutely different because you use different cases and different prepositions. So let's start. In Russian, month is месяц, месяц. And we start from December. I am going to read all the words two times. First time slowly as a Russian teacher and second time fast as a Russian native speaker. So yeah, let's start. December in English, in Russian, декабрь, декабрь, January, январь, январь, February, февраль, февраль, and all this is winter, of course, зима, зима, don't mix with дима. Dima is Russian masculine name. It is a nickname, short name um, from Dmitri. And Zima is winter. Don't mix Dima, Zima. Many of my students do this. And let's continue. March, Mart, Mart. April, April, April. May. My, my, and all this is spring, visna, visna. You know, I love these names. In Serbian language, you have the name visna. In Russian, we don't have this, but it is so beautiful. And I love the English name April. We also don't have this in Russian, but what a pity. I love these names, April and visna. Don't you think it is beautiful? Let me know in the comments below. And especially, I love the name summer in English, summer. In Russian, лето, лето. We don't have this name in Russian again. What a pity. <laughs> and let's come back to our Russian lesson. June, июнь, июнь. July, июль. Июль. August. 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 And uh, осень. Осень means autumn in Russian. Осень. And we start from September. Сентябрь. Сентябрь. October. Октябрь. Октябрь. November, ноябрь, ноябрь. And if you want to talk about this construction in some season, for example, in winter, you do not say any preposition, but you say instrumental case. So nominative case is зима. This word you can find in a dictionary. But if you want to say in winter, you say зимой. This one, зимой. In spring will be весной, весной. In summer, летом, летом. In autumn, осенью, осенью. Again, here you must be super careful because Normally, in many languages, there is some preposition here. Um, many students want to say в зимой. This is a mistake. You do not say any preposition in this grammatical Russian construction. And let's continue with months. Oh, no. Here is the example. So if you want to say, for example, in the winter, there is a lot of snow in Russia. You say зимой. В России и много снега. Зимой в России много снега. 
here you say zimoi because in winter. But you also can say, for example, it was a warm winter. Была теплая зима. Была теплая зима. Зима, here it is nominative case. So you see here the difference. Here you say зимой, and here you say зима. This is the power of Russian cases system. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Now uh, let's talk about months. So I um, united them in two big groups. In this group, we talk about cold seasons. We talk about autumn, osin, and we talk about zima, winter. So in Russian language, if you talk about cold seasons, the stress in the word is at the end of the word. Yeah, look here, please. В декабре, в январе, в феврале, в сентябре, в октябре. Sorry, I missed here K. Should be K here. В ноябре. Yeah, so if you want to say in January, you say в январе. Remember, in January is cold. Холодно, so the stress should be in the end of the word. And now, let's practice. В октябре идут дожди. В октябре идут дожди. It rains in October. Yeah, here you say в plus prepositional because in, if you want to talk about months in Russian, you always use this preposition, v plus prepositional case. So here you see this big difference. If you talk about season, you say no preposition plus instrumental case. If you talk about months in Russian, you say v plus prepositional case. Super important, yeah? And let's continue. So we say that. В октябре идут дожди, yeah, because it is in October. But if you talk about October as a subject in a sentence, you say, for example, October is a beautiful month. You say, октябрь – прекрасный месяц. Октябрь – прекрасный месяц. So you see the difference between these two Russian constructions. В октябре, в plus prepositional, октябрь, nominative itself without anything else, yeah. And now let's talk about Russian warm time. I mean Russian warm seasons. It is spring, весна, and it is, of course, summer, лето. So you remember when it is cold season, you put the stress in the end of the month, yeah? But if it is a warm season, you uh, put the stress somewhere in the middle or in the beginning of the word, yeah? Let's start. В июне, в июне, in June. В июле, в июле, in July. В августе, в августе in August, в марте, в марте, in March, в апреле, в апреле, in April, в мае, in May. So the construction is absolutely the same as we talked before. So you say the preposition в plus prepositional case, but just you keep the stress as it was in nominative case, yeah? Nominative, you say июнь, June. And in June, you say в июне. So you add preposition and the ending of prepositional case. So now let's talk about the examples. If you want to say something like July is a hot month, you say июль жаркий месяц. 
июль жаркий месяц. And, and in this sentence, июль is subject, right? So you use nominative case here. But in next Russian phrase, you use um, another construction. For example, it's always hot in July. You say, в июле всегда жарко. В июле всегда жарко. Here it is not subject. Um, it is a time in, you say in English. So you have to say preposition and prepositional case. So I hope, my dear Russian learners, that this Russian lesson was really helpful and somehow interesting for you. If so, of course, you need, you know what you need to do. You can donate me if you really love my lessons and you would like to support my channel or and you will find the link in the first comment below this video or you can hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and of course leave me any comment especially if you didn't understand something in my explanation in my Russian lesson feel free to ask me anything related to this video or any other question uh, related to life in Russia, Russian history, Russian food, Russian kitchen, and of course, Russian language, Russian grammar, I will be absolutely happy to help you to understand our Russian mentality. So thank you for watching. Спасибо за просмотр. Have a nice day. Желаю хорошего дня. Увидимся скоро. See you soon. Пока-пока. Bye-bye.